Hi everyone, my name's Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesdays. Today we're going to be talking about ourselves and our feelings. We're going to start by reading a story together, then we're going to be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making an art project together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, if you need to get a closer look, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today, we're gonna to be reading a story called Tiger Days. Something that I like to do before I read a new book, or even if it's a book that I've read before, is I like to take a close look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I start. Let's take a close look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a tiger. And I know he's a tiger because he has stripes. And I see that his mouth is open really wide, like he's letting out a big roar. And even one of his paws is out like he's ready to pounce. I don't know, let's find out. Tiger Days, a book of feelings. Written by M. H. Clark. Illustrated by Anna Hurley. On tiger days, I want to climb. I'm wild and I'm fierce. I pace around and pounce and roar. That's just what tiger days are for. What do you like to do on your tiger days? Maybe you could talk about that with the people that you're with. On snail days I go slowly in everything I do. And I might take a little while. When I'm a snail, that's just my style. On rabbit days I'm wide awake. I run and skip and jump. And when I start to hop and hop, it feels like I might never stop. But I'm still me. I'm always me, no matter how I seem. And there are just so many ways that I can be on different days. How are you feeling today? What's making you feel that way today? It's okay to feel many different things all in the same day or even all at once. I'm feeling really happy today because I get to be with you all and read stories and look at art but I'm also feeling a little sad this morning because I miss seeing some of my family and friends. Let's keep going. On turtle days, I'm quiet. On turtle days, I'm shy. I don't have much I want to say. I'd rather hide my face away. On bear days I go lumbering, I feel so big and strong. No matter what the day might bring, I think I could do anything. Who brings on your bear days? Is there someone special like a teacher or a grown-up or a friend? For me, my mom brings on my bear days. On fish days I feel watery so sad and full of tears, and even if I don't know why, I need to just sit still and cry. And sometimes I surprise myself with everything I am. There's so much that's inside of me and so much I can feel and be. On monkey days, I'm silly and I'm ready for some fun. I want to laugh and swing and play and be around my friends all day. What do you like to do on your monkey days? On bull days, I'm so full of rage, I stomp around the room. I shake my head and yell and shout and let my angry feelings out.
On rhino days, I'm stubborn. Don't tell me what to do. No matter what you think or say, I want to do it all my way. Some days I feel so wild and brave, and some days I feel small. There are so many ways to be when you're as big inside as me. Based on how you're feeling today, what animal can you most relate to? If you'd like, you can make a pose or even a noise like that animal. So I'm feeling like a bear today because I feel really big and strong today. So I might put my paws up and rawr. On parrot days, I'm loud and bright. I have so much to say. I talk a lot and laugh and sing. I want to tell you everything. On otter days, I hug you lots and hold your hand in mine. I want some extra cuddles too. I love to be right next to you. Who will I be tomorrow? How will I feel inside? I guess you'll have to wait and see which animal comes out in me. The end. What was your favorite part of the story? I want you to talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art together. So since we can't go to the museum in real life, I want you to imagine how we might get there. Are you going to sail across Forest Park in a big hot air balloon over fluffy clouds? Are you going to sail in a big sailboat? Or are you going to ride on a very slow moving donkey to get there? So you decide. So once you've decided how you're going to get there, we're going to close our eyes. Woo! Wow, we're there! Oh, wow, I'm really glad that we made it. That was a long journey, but we're here now. So let's all get comfortable. And I want everyone to take a deep breath in and out. And let's get ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together now. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing together. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this painting. What do you see? This is a portrait by Daniel Mitens. A portrait is a painting, drawing, or photograph of a person. What can we find out about this person based on their clothing and their surroundings? This is a portrait of King Charles I of England. He lived a long time ago. How do you think King Charles is feeling based on his body language? Can you make that pose? How does it make you feel? Let's zoom in to get a closer look. We can often tell a lot about how someone is feeling based on their facial expression. How do you think King Charles is feeling based on his facial expression? Let's see how another artist created a portrait. Take a close look at this painting. What do you see? How is this portrait different from the last portrait we looked at together? This is a portrait by Gehindi Wiley. He painted this portrait only two years ago. It's a painting of a woman from St. Louis named Ashley Cooper. The artist visited the museum before he made this painting and was inspired by the portrait of King Charles that we just looked at together. How do you think she is feeling based on what we can see?
Let's zoom in to get a closer look. How do you think Ashley is feeling based on her facial expression? If you'd like, you can play around of guess my feeling with the people that you're with. Just like in these portraits, we can tell a lot about how someone is feeling based on their facial expression. To play the game, make a facial expression and see if the people that you're with can guess how you're feeling. Be sure to take turns. Now that we've looked at some art together, let's travel back home so that we can go make our own art. So hop in your hot air balloon or get in your sailboat or get on that slow moving donkey and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own feelings puppets. And we're gonna be using a few different materials today. To start, we'll need a paper tube. So if you have these from toilet paper or paper towels or other things like that, we're gonna use one of those. Um, we'll also need some taper glue, um, some drawing materials. So if you have markers or crayons or colored pencils, I'm gonna be using markers today. And we'll also need some scissors and some paper to cut up. So I have some paper um, that I've ripped out of magazines or things from treasure mail. Um, and I also have some colored paper to use today too. Um, so to make our feeling puppet to start with, first we have to decide what kind of feeling we might want our puppet to show. Um, so I'm gonna be making a excited puppet today. Um, and something I might wanna think about is what their facial expression might look like or what their body language might look like. Um, and to start, I'm gonna be making the body part of my puppet. Um, and I'm gonna make uh, a striped shirt for my puppet today because I like stripes. So I'm gonna cut out some stripes out of my paper that I have here. And remember the best tools to use for this project are the ones that you already have. So if you have paper tubes, great. If you just have drawing materials, you can draw on your paper tube. You don't even have to cut things out of paper. And I'm gonna cut, I kind of see how long I want my shirt to be on my excited puppet. And I'm gonna make a, puppet of a person today, but you can also think about making a puppet of an animal, kind of like how we read in the story. Um, and think about how those different animals might make us think of different feelings. So I'm going to use some tape to attach it today, but you can also use glue. Since this is going to be the back of my puppet, it's okay if the tape shows. We'll have this be the front of my puppet. And now I might want to glue on my striped shirt of, on my puppet. And something else you can use if you don't have a paper tube is you can use a long handled kitchen utensil like a wooden spoon or a spatula, um, and you can kind of tape the elements of your puppet onto that uh, instead of on a paper tube. Just make sure you don't glue it or your grown up in your house might be kind of upset that they can't use their kitchen utensil anymore, but it can be used as a temporary puppet. All right, so there's my striped shirt my puppet here. I think I might want them to have blue jeans on, so I think I'm gonna use my marker here. And I'm just gonna color the bottom of my puppet blue here. So that they have the blue jeans on. And 
when I'm thinking about my puppet being excited, I think they're going to need to have a big smile on their face. Maybe their eyes are going to be open really wide. I might make some hands and arms that are kind of extended. So there's my blue jeans on my puppet here. Now I might move on to the hair, or maybe you're going to make your puppet a hat. And I've got this really pretty pink color that I found in a magazine page, so I think my puppet is going to have pink hair. So I'm going to cut out. And you can find some great colors and patterns in magazines or newspapers or in your treasure mail piles which I am calling instead of junk mail piles. So there's my pink hair. I think I might need to add a few more little details here to make it look like hair. on but you can also cut it out of things and add it on if you want. So I want some eyes here and since they're really excited I might have their eyebrows raised really high and I think they're gonna have a mouth that's open really wide because they're really excited. color the inside of the mouth just so because sometimes when people have their mouths open really wide you can see their tongues. So I'm gonna add a little tongue inside there. Okay now I think my person might need some arms to also show that they're excited. So I might cut those out of the green paper since they have a green striped shirt. And remember, your puppet can look any way that you want. Don't worry about, oh, this doesn't look like a hand, or this doesn't look like a mouth. It's your puppet, so it gets to look however you want it to look. That's the great thing about making your own art, is it gets to look the way that you want it to look. Attach my excited hands, which I think are going to be raised in the air, and I might use some tape to do that. And I'm using masking tape, but you can use scotch tape or duct tape or any kind of tape that you have is great. I'm just going to roll my tape into little tubes so you can't see it. And attach it this way. Kind of have our arms sticking out here. I might even fold it a little so you can see that they're raised. Make another tape tube and add my other arm. And now I have my excited puppet. And I can put my fingers in and do my puppet show. 
Thank you for spending some time with me today here at Wee Wednesday. I wanted to show you some other puppets that I made. Uh, so here's the puppet that we made together. This is my excited puppet. I also made another puppet out of a toilet paper roll, only this time I made an animal, kind of like how we read in the story. This is my fox puppet, which I think he might be a little mischievous, so I think this is my little troublemaker puppet. And I also made a puppet out of a kitchen utensil. So this is my rather sad puppet for my puppet show. So feel free to put on a puppet show with all of the different feelings puppets that you make. Uh, and please share photos of your artwork with us on social media. You can use the hashtag STLArtMuseum to share them with us. Uh, I hope to see you back here next week. And everyone keep on creating. Bye.